so today uh, we welcome back uh, Judy Norton to That's Classic uh, for a fan question episode. All the fans have sent in different episodes or different questions, I should say, and uh, we'll see what Judy can answer. Well, we, I know she's going to do her best. So Judy, thanks a ton for being here. Absolutely. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, just uh, so much. I had so much fun with you last time. And, and honestly, the fans loved it. And anyway, can't thank you enough. So um, let's uh, let's start with our first question. And I'll, I'll I think I'll just read the first name just in case they don't want their last name read. But I know that they'll want their name on there. So this is from Faith, who actually writes it F-A-Y-T-H. Kind of cool. Um, cool. In which episode do you think that you did your best acting? Oh, that's that's impossible. I, I, I have a really hard time watching myself. Mm -hmm. um, so most of the time, I, I have to watch things by myself because if other people are around, I get really self-conscious. Um, and I have to get through it sometimes at least once to get over looking at myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, and sometimes things that I felt really good when I was filming, I watch back and don't like as much and things that I felt not so comfortable filming sometimes look great. So it's, it's an interesting thing. That's what I found during the Waltons. I think in subsequent work that I did later in my career, sometimes I felt like those matched up a little bit better with how I felt about it at the time, and then what I saw. Uh, but, you know, it was months between, on the Waltons, between filming and mm -hmm. actually being able to see an episode, if I even got to see it, because of yeah. course there were no recorders back when our show started. Uh, not, not unless you were really, you know, the big, huge, chunky sort of recorders that were very expensive in, right. in the day because they were new. So it was like the late 70s before I ever had any capacity to record anything. We didn't get to, they did not screen them for us before uh, they wow. aired. Um, so uh, I think, I mean, the Easter story has always been one of my favorites. Uh, so I think that overall, uh, that one I enjoyed filming and I enjoyed watching. So I was consider that yeah, that's <laughs> a plus. It, yeah. Hey, I, you know, I, um, I mean, I thought I did great um, scenes in a lot of episodes and there's certain types of things that are harder for me to watch. Some of the really emotional scenes are not necessarily comfortable for me to watch back. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes I can watch things and go, oh, I remember how uncomfortable I was filming that. Like the in the episode, the actress, when they got me all made up and I thought I was oh so hip looking and everybody made fun of me. Well, I thought I looked pretty stupid too. <laughs> <laughs> That's hysterical. Yeah. Oh, so I was like, oh my God, I have all this makeup on and I look so stupid and no wonder everyone's laughing at me. <laughs> oh my gosh. Talk about being able to just jump, dive into the role. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. Well, um, she has quite a few questions, so I'm going to intermix her questions, and I'm okay. going to actually ask you, this is an episode question. Um, this is, it says, uh, this is from Dave. He says, I noticed Ellen Corby had a story credit for The Search. Did she write any other episodes? Um, she might have she might have had a story credit on one others. I mean, those are the types of things when people ask me those questions on my YouTube channel, mm -hmm. I go to IMDB Pro and I look them up <laughs> because yeah. you know, who yeah. was the actor in this episode? It's like, I, you know, maybe I remember, maybe I don't. Um, mm -hmm. It's like trying to remember how many episodes Richard directed or Ralph directed. Um, they were right. the only two cast members that directed episodes. Um, Michael Learned, uh, what had some form of writer credit on one episode. I don't remember which one off the top of my head. I didn't um, know that. Yeah. Uh, and then the, I think she might have had done sort of the story and then somebody else wrote the script. So that would happen at times. And I think that's kind of what happened with Ellen was that she had the story idea, kind of the outline mm -hmm. idea of the story. And then, and then it was turned over to one of their sort of rotating writers um, that wrote a lot of episodes for the Waltons. We really didn't have a staff of writers like in a room that got together like some shows have. Um, and in, the, in that period, 
of time. I think it, that happened more with sitcoms, mm-hmm. the writer's room, because they right. had to craft all these jokes and stuff. Um, on our show, I think they were, we had a lot of different writers that had very good reputations in the business and they would farm them out to people. Interesting. Did, did Earl Hamner have to approve uh, each of them? I don't know. He was, um, initially he was a s- executive s- story consultant or editor or whatever. Um, I think he certainly had input on every episode, whether he requested rewrites on things, how much he did hands-on, because usually it would, I think storylines had to be approved. Mm -hmm. Um, And then if it was given to, if the same writer pitched the story who also wrote it, then typically they would have one or two rewrites that was, that was included in the fee, the standard writer's guild fee that, Mm -hmm. that, um, from the union that the, the writers would get paid. And I'm pretty sure our writers pretty much work for whatever the, the going rate was in the writer's guild. Um, So beyond that, typically on shows after they get through the points that they're paid for, then it goes into the company. And we always had a story editor. If it wasn't Earl, then other, there were other people who took over that particular position and they would be probably responsible for any additional rewrites or changes or things the director asked for. Those typically wouldn't go back to the original writer is my understanding. Mm -hmm. Um, And in some cases, I have heard stories of, you know, Earl having a conversation with a director about something that he felt didn't resonate in the script and Earl, you know, doing a a rewrite of that particular scene. Um, So I think there's a lot of different ways it happened. And, and I think a lot of that's changed now because I think most TV series do have a writer's room now. Right. Exactly. Definitely. Interesting. Um, actually, you had mentioned Ralph Waite. I think one of the questions that came in, yeah, here, this is um, the Fawn episode. I don't know if you right. remember, recall, this, yep. this is from JC. Uh, the Fawn episode was directed by Ralph Waite. What is it like to have him as your director versus co-star? Um, it's different. Uh, he is, I don't think I appreciated him as much as, not that I didn't appreciate him as a director when we were filming, but as I have gone back and watched episodes that he directed, uh, more and more I appreciate him as a director. Plus, I have gone on to do some directing since that time. So there's a lot more I've learned. And so I will notice different things that he did. And at the time, I remember going, oh, Ralph's being clever. You know, he's looking for some, it's like, what is he doing on the side of the bar and peeking through there? What, you know, oh, he's yeah. going to put the camera someplace clever. And, you know, at the time, I mean, I was a teenager. So I, you know, I thought I knew it all. And it's like, right, oh, you know, we just get on with it. What's so, yeah, why do we have to be clever? <laughs> you know, you think you know it all and you think you have, you have an opinion about everything and usually it's not valid. Right, um, exactly. I have, I have grown to realize as I look back, but he, what, well, so, and he was very, he could be very intense as an actor and as a director, wow. um, not in a bad way, but just, he wasn't, he wasn't what I call really laid back all the time. I and mean, he was sometimes depending on the scene, but, you know, he brought so much to that character and he had a lot of intense scenes mm-hmm. and um the every actor has their own process about how they like to work. And I think he was a little more um, method um, the way he came up in um, New York uh, studying as an actor. So sometimes if things around him were distracting to him, you know, he didn't like that. He, he was, you know, he wanted sometimes like get, you know, get people out of my eye line. Wow. because I have to look that direction and there's, I'm seeing extra people and that's distracting. Um, so he had a way he liked to work. And I'm sure that as we all can, when we feel under pressure or we have something about the scene that feels more demanding, or we're not feeling totally comfortable with what we're doing, then, you know, we all have our ways of trying to manage that. It's a very, rigorous schedule shooting a tv series we had six and a half days to do an hour show which sounds to the average viewer like 
wow, what a ton of time, but most shows take eight days or more. Right. Right. So, and we were not shooting a 44 under 45 minute episode to do an hour because they didn't run as many commercials then. So right. we were where now a script might be 45, 46 pages, maybe 48. We were shooting 58 pages. Wow. That is a ton. Yeah. Um, so all of those things. So there were times where, um, you know, you just kind of went, okay, Ralph needs his, you know, he needs his space. He needs his focus. And, you know, I might, uh, I might roll my eyes to myself, but, oh, Ralph's on it, you know, because <laughs> I thought I was so brilliant. Oh, I don't get distracted, whatever, right, you, right. Know, you know, um, uh, from the eyes of a teenager. Um, but I really do appreciate all of the, the ways in which he wanted to always bring life to the scenes, like mm -hmm. real life. Like, oh, you kids wouldn't be sitting around just sitting around. You'd be doing something. If we're outside, okay, well, let's have them playing a game. Let's mm -hmm. let's have let's have life happening. And so I think that's why so many of the episodes that he shot just had this wonderful fullness to them that nobody ever just you didn't just sit and have and sit and talk. It was kind of something was happening because in that's a family cool. like that at that time, that would be the case. Mm -hmm. Everybody had a lot of things to get done. So I, I really appreciate that now looking back at it, what he, what he did. And, you know, because he knew us and he knew the characters and he knew the show, I think that there was a lot that he could bring to it that a director we maybe hadn't worked with before wouldn't know. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's so, that's interesting. Um, Michael Learned has been on the show since you, uh, since you were on. And it, it's funny, she talked about the uh, scenes where you were all at the um, at the table eating. Oh, gosh, how, yes. Yeah, she was like, that could be an Ruling. entire day. That yeah. was it. Yeah. 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 It was, those were always grueling because it, they were long. Uh, dealing with the food was a pain. <laughs> right. You know, trying to match all of that so that you didn't the camera didn't see you one time where your hands here and then come back and you're over here reaching for something. So you had to match right. up everything between close-ups and long shots. The food went from being maybe appetizing to cold and congealed and oh. you had to kind of keep dealing with it. Um, oh boy. It was, it was a, a small space by the time you got all of us plus all the crew that needed to be in there. And you turned those big hot lights on lights were very hot back then. Oh so it'd be like right. no air in that set. And a lot of times between shots, they didn't want to let us leave the set because they knew we scattered like little rats, you know? And so gathering oh, sure. us all back up was a lot of work. So sometimes they just say, we're only going to be five minutes, just stay there. So we, you know, they'd make us sit at the table. And so we'd be like, you know, bored and, and you get tired and your energy is just go, eh. and I'm so sure. we'd start goofing around trying to keep our energy up. And Ralph was, was really guilty of telling us off color jokes and stories and <laughs> singing off key. And so we'd get, get, we'd all get to kind of laughing and goofing around trying to keep our energy up. And then we'd get in trouble because the crew's trying to light and we're being loud and distracting. So he always played those things back and forth. You know, it was, that's cool. That's yeah. cool that that happened though. I love, I love hearing that. Um, okay. We'll, we'll go away from an episode for a second. We'll go to a more general question. Again, this is from Ian. Um, what were your favorite behind the scenes stories, if any, do any like that? You well, I mean, this, some of the stuff around the table was funny, you know, Ralph was, was very entertaining, you know, and he did tell us some, I mean, there's, I'm horrible at remembering jokes, but there were a few that he told that I still remember and I can't repeat, um, you know, yeah, I got you. Setting. but, yeah. um, you know, there was, there was funny things like that. Um, there was one time when um, bef we were in the kitchen, uh, they were going to call everybody in and, and, and somebody got the idea to play a prank on Richard, Richard Thomas. Oh and God. so everybody cast and crew all painted, all put a mole on one side of their face, different <laughs> sides, different places. And so when he came in, of course, he did this kind of, you know, and he has a great <laughs> sense of humor. So he completely cracked up. Um, so that one was, that one was kind of fun. Um, there was one time when someone found early on, uh, some, a number of us had, most of us had dressing rooms that were on the soundstage. They built these just little kind of cubicles. Um, and so they were pretty small, uh, mm -hmm. 
and the size of maybe you know yeah you know, average size walk-in closet is about the size of it just wow. enough to, you know so he had a dressing room on the sound stage and somebody found this huge stuffed moose like on a on a like a some sort of a box that was on wheels that you could wheel around this and so somebody had taken it and they backed it into his dressing room um oh, oh so God. that i think even the antlers may have been above the you know above the door but i don't think he noticed it and so when richard went to his dressing room and opened the door here's this huge <laughs> bigger than him you know giant moose in his dressing room oh my gosh that is so funny oh so i love those, that that those that types happened. of things you know again our our craft service guy who you know he took care of all the the snacks and the drinks and everything for the crew uh he and richard were good buddies and so and so eddie would often be looking for ways to pull pranks on richard and when john ritter was working on the show the two of them were always trying to find ways to to get each other to crack up and you know, oh, how so, funny. Yeah. they were totally funny. cut ups together. So Richard talks about times when he'd ha he'd take like one of the sponges that uh, were used to put on makeup and like he put it in his mouth and it would start foaming up. So then he'd look like he was rabid. So like foam would be dripping down his face. Like when he was off camera and John Ritter's doing some very serious scene <laughs> as the minister and but again, oh. um, for the most part, everybody was really good at, um, and and you, people didn't pull pranks on people that they didn't feel could handle them. Nobody tried to, if if they felt like this wasn't a time to mess around because this actor, you know, they didn't do that. So they weren't disrespectful mm -hmm. in that sense. Um, so it was all in good fun. And if some, I never heard anybody get upset about some prank thinking that it was like that was a wrong time to do it. I think they had really good judgment on it. Oh, that's great. And you know, I got to tell you, uh, I had reached out to uh, Richard Thomas to come on the show. And uh, what a true gentleman. I got to tell you, he he uh, here he is. He's on the he's on the road with To Kill a Mockingbird. Obviously, he's got umpteen different, you know, nights he's, he's performing and everything like that. He reaches back to me uh, personally, tells me that it's just it's really difficult with, you know, his schedule right now. But uh, that he would, you know, he'll definitely would love to be on the show, you know, later on. I, just that's class. That's yeah. class. That's that's all. He, I he's say. he's yeah. terrific. Yeah. I mean, not so much now because of still COVID protocols. Sure. But um, tip, I heard any number of my friends or even other people say that when they went to see him in a theater production and they waited, you know, outside the stage door and he came mm -hmm. out and you know was very he's always very kind to to fans and viewers and signing things and taking pictures and stuff he's he's always been like that just really you know he's terrific that's cool yeah i'm hoping to see him in that actually at some point we'll, we'll see yeah i'm going um i'm going up to san francisco to see him um in a couple of weeks yeah oh my gosh that yeah. you know what it's gotten great reviews I bet oh i'm sure he's so good i've seen him on stage a number of times in different productions and he's always terrific Wow, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. Okay, let's see. Let's throw another one. We we get going and what the heck? Um, yeah, we'll get through four questions. That's kind of <laughs> exactly. the way I roll. I I don't I don't answer in sound bites. <laughs> right? I know, which I love actually. Um, okay, so what do we have here? Um, okay, this is back to Faith. Faith says, "Do you have a favorite quote from your lines that you remember?" Um. Uh, the first thing that popped to mind was you're all a bunch of piss ants. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. You know, it was, it was, it was hard to, that one comes back all the time, you know? Yeah. That's a pretty yeah. good line. Yeah. Yeah. And followed by topped by little Cammy Kotler. I don't feel like a piss ant, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Which sincerity. was the, that was the best. <laughs> oh, that's great. But I set it up. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, that's a good one, actually. Okay, and then, um, well, it, what's great is she. The next question was favorite quote from any other character. Yeah. Oh, maybe it was. There you Cameron. go. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, exactly. That kind of made it. Okay, let's go back to an episode question. Um, this is from Cody. I really enjoyed the anniversary episode. Was it an acting challenge for you, seeing your ex fiance, and then Kurt on his return? That's right. I forgot the, about Kurt. Yeah. Um. Oh, I. I had really loved working with Bob Woods 
Um, and I'm so glad that he continued on to have such a wonderful career. Um, I, I believe it's One Life to Live is a soap opera that he's mm -hmm. on. Um, and early, he did the Waltons very early in his career. And I remember he was very endearing because he was very nervous, you know, and he came yeah. in, of course, five seasons into the show when we were all pretty comfortable and relaxed. And so um, I always enjoyed working with him and we always kind of tease like, it's okay, we'll get, you know, it's okay, it's okay Bob, we'll get you through it. <laughs> you know? yeah, right, right, right. Exactly. That would be intimidating. That would um, be, yeah. yeah. So, so we, um, so it was fun for me, it was fun to have him back on the show on an episode here and there. Um, and I mean, I got along really well with Tom Bauer too. Um, mm -hmm. And, but you know, there was a lot more age difference between me and Tom. So mm -hmm. I think, you know, although we worked well together, we didn't at that point in time necessarily hang out away from mm -hmm. work. You know, I'm sure I just seemed like, <laughs> again, like just a kid to him, right, right. <laughs> which yeah. I kind of was. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wow. Um, yeah. Uh, but he came on to, um, to do um, guest, uh, and do, Tom did do an episode with me on my YouTube. And that was fun to kind of go back and hear his perspective on, on some of the things, you know. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. And by the way, I'm glad you mentioned your YouTube. It's a, it, and isn't it Judy Norton behind the scenes, the Waltons behind the scenes? Yeah, I mean, it, yeah. it is. It's all kind of behind the scenes of the Waltons. And it's just, yeah. I, I, I didn't call it anything particular. It's, you know, like sort of Judy Norton channel or whatever. But any of those yeah. should find it on on YouTube. If you put my name with that, it'll, I've done so many segments now, it should come up for people. <laughs> well, I'll, I'd be happy to pitch it here and I'll tell Thank you right you. now, it's a great channel. It really is sincerely. And I, and you get a lot of great commentary on uh, comments on my channel saying how much they enjoy that. Oh, well. good. You good. Know, yeah. Happy to hear that. Um, yeah. I think you, I honestly, I think you've been very beneficial to me and vice versa. <laughs> it's really funny. Good. I mean, you know, cool. happy to send um, it back and forth. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, here, this is a quick one. I, I think uh, Davis, did you shoot the Tempest on location in Florida? I'm not sure I know. What we did not No, because Mary Ellen is supposed to go oh. to Florida. She's heard that Kurt is still alive and he's living down in Florida. And so I get on a bus to go down to Florida and find out what's going on. I thought he was dead. Okay. Yeah. Um, so no, we, that was all just filmed on the back lot of the studio at Warner brothers or inside um, sound stages there. I, we, I don't think we even left the studio lot on that episode. Oh, interesting. Well, it must've been shot pretty good day for him to ask that question. I'll say yeah. that. Yeah. That yeah. says a lot. Um, it says, uh, this is going back to faith favorite song that you sang on the show there was a lot of singing and music at gatherings for fun christmas the quilting etc yeah um i think probably as time goes by because it's one of my favorite movies casablanca and one of my favorite songs so it was i don't i think it might have been in the anniversary that we mm -hmm. sang that when we went up to find um our parents who were up on the mountain and stuff like that. So yeah, that would have been my favorite. Okay. And you know what? There's somebody else went over here. Here, I'm just going to go with this because we're on that. Liz, is singing a passion of yours as you have a beautiful voice in the show? That was nice to say. Thank you. Um, I started, yes, it is. Um, I started singing, I started taking singing lessons during the series because I really, I loved it and um, I really struggled with pitch and stuff when I was first learning. I didn't hear pitch, you know, correctly. And I, I couldn't hear when I was out of tune. So, and because I really wanted to be able to sing, I, uh, I started studying and I had a real interest in doing musical theater. So I studied for a lot of years and then was able after the Waltons ended to start doing some musical theater. So mm -hmm. I did you know, I did that a lot of stage work after the series ended and then have since done some concert work and um, did turned one live concert into a CD that um, uh, that I have. And then I'm actually in the process and um, hopefully we can chat again when it comes out. But um, I'm definitely. in the process of finishing up a Christmas CD for this year. Oh, wow. OK. So, yeah. All right. That's big news. Yeah. Okay. Well, believe me, we'll definitely talk again. Um, so, um, 
was I going to say on that? Oh, how did you, uh, by the way, how did you overcome that with the, with the pitch and not, you know, you know, thousands and thousands of hours of lessons, you know, I was oh. not what I would call a natural singer. I mean, I watch these singing competition shows and I just, mm -hmm. so I'm so jealous of these, these young kids that like, just have this natural voice. That's just yeah. fabulous. And that was not me. I just had a real passion. And so I was willing to put in the time and wow. it was just, you know, doing running scales, whatever it was that my voice teacher, I went through a lot of different voice teachers, you know, I'd find one took me to a certain point and then I felt like I wasn't progressing. And, um, you know, that we weren't what they were giving me, I couldn't execute. So mm -hmm. I'd find mm -hmm. another teacher and maybe that would take me a little further. And then, so I just, lots of, lots of years of, of lessons and lots of hours of practicing on my own. And mm -hmm. yeah. That Boy, I got a lot of respect it. for that. That's a, that's a big deal when you can't hear. I, I am like, I am like tone deaf. I'm telling you when it comes to like being able to hear pitch or any of that. So I have big respect for that. That's, that's yeah, it was just when I was singing, I couldn't hear that I was out of tune. Wow. So, um, and a lot of times that isn't so much that you don't hear it as you don't have the, um, your muscles, your, your vocal cords and stuff and, and your, what, how you're producing the sound isn't strong enough to so you think a pitch it's like you could think of a high pitch you could hear it you could go oh i know what that is but it doesn't mean you can hit the note mm -hmm. so sometimes mm -hmm. it is it, it is an approach so it's it, it's in the technique that the way i was trying to sing the note wasn't properly shaping it wasn't doing everything that needed to happen for it to be in tune um, wow. so the, the good thing with that is that i feel like because of all the things i had to learn that i developed a lot of tools Mm -hmm. So, um, if something isn't working, I feel like I have quite a toolkit to go, well, let me try this. Let me try that. Let me adjust this, that. Whereas if somebody just always could sing, if they then suddenly start having trouble with their voice, they may not know how to navigate because we all have off days as singers. And sometimes, you know, it doesn't feel good and you're working the whole time going, I'm going to put that note there. And then I'm going to put that note there because it's just not smoothly blending the way you want. Maybe it's cracking. Maybe you're, you're fighting a little bit of you know, throat thing or a cold. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of technical things that can go on in trying to make that happen and make it as good as it can be, even on a bad day. Wow. That's pretty darn cool. That is. I got Like I said, I got a lot of respect for that. Thank you. Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, let's see. So I, oh, well, this is a good, this is, we'll go back to faith. Uh, favorite guest actor or actress or actresses? Oh, wow. I mean, we had so many amazing guest stars that um, it's, I feel like I do a disservice if I mention one and not another, but you know, people sure. that immediately come to mind are John Ritter, working yeah. with John Ritter was such a treat. Um, Ron Howard guested on our show. And of course he was already well known. And so it was really a thrill to go, oh my goodness, you know, oh I knew gosh. who he was, you know, there were, there were actresses that actors and actresses who were on the show that I just didn't know their pedigree because again, they were, their career had been before I was aware of the things that they were doing. Right. Um, so like when Beulah Bondi was on the show, I, 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 I heard, well, you know, she's, she's a big deal, yeah. but I wasn't, it wasn't that I had seen her work. So sometimes my mom would, you know, would mention certain people like Jean Marsh uh, did an episode and my mom's English. And so she, I think, was familiar with Jean Marsh from Upstairs, Downstairs oh, wow. earlier on. And, um, but Sissy Spacek, you know, did two episodes. But, you know, yeah. before she was Sissy Spacek, I, I loved right. it. I, I spoke with Cammy recently um, on my channel and she talked about running into Sissy Spacek years later, like an airport someplace. And and going up to her and kind of going, well, you probably don't remember me. You know, it's, I wouldn't expect you. I worked with you when I was really little. She said, but you know, I've always followed your career and, and in some way I've, I always feel like we can take a little bit of credit for, you know, for having helped you get started, yeah. you know, just in a cute yeah. way. Like, you know, we, we get to feeling like we helped launch people's careers. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. It's true. Yeah. Well, there's a, honestly, I think a couple of the, I got to look real quick here. Yeah, here, here's the one from, uh, for Sissy Spacek. It mm -hmm. says, what do you remember about working on the episode, The Townie with Sissy Spacek? 
Um, I, I don't remember a lot because mm -hmm. it was very early on. So I was, you know, maybe 15 or something at the time. Right. Um, I remember, you know, there's a lot of those, those actresses who were incredibly talented that um, I don't, I don't remember her being like um, somebody who was a cut up, you know, or I think I, I get, I seem to recall, you know, she took the work very, she was very professional, you know, she, she was very focused on the work and, um, and did, you know, wonderful work. And there's people like that, that even then you could watch them work and just admire their mm -hmm. talent. Um, and she was, she was one of those people. I mean, um, if she'd been really unpleasant, I probably would have remembered. So my, my, my best uh, sense is that she was lovely to have um, on the show and she did beautiful work. I didn't get to do a lot of scenes with her because so most more with Richard um, in both episodes, but um, you know, such a treat to then look back and go, hey, yeah, we worked with her. <laughs> that is cool, that is cool. And would that have been quite a bit before Carrie? before she did Carrie? Yeah, probably. Um, I mean, because if I was like, it, yeah, it would have been a few years. I think she probably, did, I think she did Carrie in, was that in the 70s also? I think it, it was. was. like It was like late. So it was probably just a few years before yeah. Carrie. Okay, yeah, I got yeah. you. And then you mentioned Ron Howard, ironically. Yeah. Sue, in The Gift, yeah. Ron Howard plays Seth Turner. Was it an emotional episode and was Ron Howard an idol of yours? Oh, totally. I mean, I, I was, it was such a kick to have him on because I had watched him. It was like Ivan Dixon from Hogan's Heroes directed yeah. a number of episodes. Oh my gosh, and you're kidding me. No, so that was fabulous. So I was like a big oh. fan. It's like, oh my gosh, there he is. Yeah. Um, Ron, um, yeah, it was just such a treat to have him. And, and, and John Walmsley told a, a wonderful story um, about, when Ron first came on the set, um, because John was used to people people saying to him, "Oh, you know, you look like Ron Howard." Oh, totally. Because totally. They do look yeah. similar. Um, and then I guess when Ron Howard came on the set, he said to John, "Oh, you're the guy that people tell me I look like." Oh, how funny! How funny is that? Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's great. So I mean, he was he was great, and he is someone that I did cross paths with on and off for a number of years after he was a guest um, when he was doing happy days our yeah. show um had a softball team and yes. i also played on um kiss radio's um softball team so uh -huh. we would play different shows we would play different you know so um i remember we played you know against happy days or you know i did a couple of um games at dodger stadium and where they had a lot of different celebrities. So I, I crossed paths with him a number of times or at different celebrity events. And he was always he, just a real, you know, just a good guy, just a real guy. And, you know, and yeah. no, no ego, no attitude, no snobbery. You know, I met his wife who was lovely. And, you know, so yeah, that was, that was really, really nice yeah. to, you know, to, to, to learn that about. Whereas, you know, some of the people I just, I lost track of, I didn't cross paths with them again. Mm -hmm. So I yeah. didn't have any further experience to know, to alter anything I might've thought at the time. Right. Right. Yeah. I actually, I read uh, the book that he put out with his brother, Clint, the boys this past year. And oh. it's pretty obvious that his dad rants like you know, shut that down quick, like, mm -hmm. you know, trying to, you know, think you're any better than anybody else and all that. So that's, that's, that's great to hear. And, and Ron, you know. Rance Howard was a recurring character on our show. Oh my, you know, he played I did not one know Dr. That. MacGyver's. So he did multiple episodes as Dr. MacGyver's. Oh, wow. Is that a yeah. cool little tie-in? I, I mean, he fits yeah. it perfect. Like, you know, I mean, yeah. you think of Rance, you go, oh, definitely the Waltons. That That's cool. Yeah. Wow. They, by the way, you mentioned the softball team. Henry Winkler has also been on here and he talked about the softball team and apparently they were very good. Yeah, they were. Yeah. That's what I heard. Yeah. I mean, you know, you got all those, you know, Don, Don most, uh, you know, uh, is a friend we've done some concerts together. We've done some theater oh, together. Cool. Um, so he's, I love, I love Don. Um, but you know, very talented athlete. You know, I mean, they had Ron and Anson and, and Don and, you know, and, and Gary Marshall, I knew, and, you know, he was, 
you know, he was, I used, I played doubles tennis a number of times oh, with him because yeah, a very good awesome. friend of mine was his tennis teacher. Oh my so, gosh. Yeah. So all, all those guys, um, I remember the first time we, I played on a, I don't remember which team, if it was the Waltons or the Kiss Radio, but we were playing um, against, I think, Happy Days. And I had not met, Ron, uh, had not met Henry. Yeah. And at one point, um, as we were, as we passed each other, I just kind of went, hey, I just want to say hello. And I'm, you know, such a, such an admirer of yours and what nice. And he was very kind. He's like, oh, thank you very much. And, and then he did a double and he goes, oh, and he, and he figured out who I was and he's like, oh, and I'm, you know, <laughs> so, you know, he went from the very polite to then a very, very nice sort of acknowledgement of my, you know, my work and stuff like that, or our show. So that, you know, that those things, you know, stand up. I never expect people to, you know, I'm so in awe of other actors and, yeah, and I can sure. get very starstruck, um, and so when I meet people that I've watched and I really like, you know, I'm a little kind of tongue tied and, and I never expect people to know me or remember me or anything. Yeah. Um, and, and I remember one time being at, I had done this show, there used to be this show called, um, it was some dance thing, it was a dance competition and, and, and they would have celebrity judges. Um, yeah. And dance fever, I don't remember what it was called. Um, anyway, I was a guest judge on that show one time and Isaac Hayes was another, another oh guest. God. And so, you know, we just did that short little blip and, you know, and, and went on. So years later, I was, I was a presenter at some music awards. And so I went to this thing and I'm sitting at this table and at the table behind me is Isaac Hayes. And I thought, oh, I'd love to say hi, but he won't remember me, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so all of a sudden I feel this tap on the show. He goes, hi, Isaac Hayes. We did dance fever together. I'm like, of course I remember you. you know? It's Isaac Hayes. You're I'm... Isaac Hayes. You know? yeah, right. Oh my gosh. That's I'm just a funny. Walton, you know? Right, right. And he's in, awe, he's in awe of you. I mean, that's cool. Yeah. So those always are, are very touching to me because I never expect it. And I never... I always assume people won't remember me, you know, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, <laughs> I get you. You know, Henry, it's funny. Um, I, I was fortunate enough to meet Henry many years ago too when I was working for one of the studios and and we had time to talk. And he literally, I, I swear, carries like a video camera with him, like almost always. And he actually said in the interview too that he has all the footage of all the softball games. He's the one that, that wow. he's the reason they have the footage. Wow. But, but he goes around, he loves to like, you know, he's still in awe. Yeah, he's the Fonz, but he's still in awe of like meeting you, meeting, you know, anyone on the, you know, that was was an actor. And it's just, it's so cool that he is like so true to himself that he's not that big, you know, idol. So it's funny talking with you. It reminds me of talking with him oh, because he has wow. that same approach you do. Like, it's cool. Oh my gosh, you know, whereas some people yeah. are like, I'm above it all, you know, yeah. it's like, not really, you know. <laughs> That's cool. That's really neat. Um, okay, so let's go to another one here. This is from Warren. In the ring, mm -hmm. did you have a say in how the ring would be lost? And was this a lawn episode to shoot? Um, I had nothing to say with how the ring was lost. Uh, and I don't remember how we had to, I, it was probably an edit in terms of because I drew, I draw, it gets dropped in the ladies bathroom right. and then it ends up that. falling very close to a drain, um, in the floor. Um, and so it was probably, you know, one cut when I get my, my, when I get bumped and the ring falls and I don't realize, and then a cut to the ring, you know, very close to the drain. So I didn't have to try and aim it <laughs> yeah, right. for, for the drain. So um, but it was, did you say, how, was it a long Yeah, episode? was it lengthy? No, no <laughs> longer than, than shooting any other episode. So, no. okay. yeah, I mean, that one was fun because, uh, you know, I, Mary Ellen gets to go to a college dance. Right. And of course, right. her nemesis, Martha Rose Coverdale is there, you know, being oh so snooty. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. I would think that'd be a fun episode for you. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah. Did you, I, I, I can't re, I, I vaguely recall the the 
the the rain, the bathroom, all that. Did you dance a lot in that particular episode? Um, a, a little bit, yeah. You know, there was a two or three dances, uh, pieces of dances, um, as conversations were happening and stuff. Um, we did quite a bit of dancing on on the show, you know, because we were having barn dances and um, and then when when John Walmsley when he was playing with Bobby Bigelow's band when Maeve Nutter came in and you know so there would be episodes with that um, so there was frequently um, frequently things and in the Easter story when I'm going to be going to some school dance and then I need to teach GW how to dance and so um, uh, mama gets John Boy to teach me how to dance so that then I can go and teach GW and you know so there was all those kinds of things or sometimes we danced around the living room and yeah so yeah I mean all of those and it ended up like I don't think I ever danced with Ralph but I think I danced with pretty much all the other you know boys in the in the family at some point and um, I remember dancing with Richard a number of times because Richard's a really good dancer Oh, is uh, his parents that? were ballet teachers, you know, oh, and dancers. Please. So, you know, his sister was a prima ballerina, you know, so Richard kind of came up in the ballet world. So um, wow. although he wouldn't necessarily consider himself a dancer, he's, you know, very graceful and very, very coordinated. Mm -hmm. And when they did a lot of that's on display in the episode, the marathon, when mm -hmm. um, John Boy enters this marathon dance with, with Daisy, because she wants to try and earn this the money from you know that 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 went on during the depression these marathon dances that went on right, for right. days and days um so you know there were times where you saw that so he i always loved dancing with him because he was he was so easy to follow and i always felt like a better dancer when i was dancing with yeah, him yeah oh yeah i bet i bet there was there actually a uh I guess a dance consultant, a choreographer, choreographer in the, uh, for the Walton. No, because most of the time we were just the music was such that we could do whatever we wanted. Um, wow. We, I don't know if we had a little bit of a square dance one time. So if that was the case, then somebody might have taught us the what were the moves we need to do. I think that might have happened maybe one episode, but now it was all pretty much. <laughs> what does anybody get out there and have do? fun yeah, exactly because that yeah. would have been realistic none of us were supposed to be dancers so right. we didn't we weren't meant to look like somebody had come in and choreographed us um there were times at one point um ronnie claire who played cora beth was supposed to open a ballet school and she was teaching elizabeth and amy um oh, wow so i don't remember if something but they didn't really do much there and i don't remember if ronnie claire had enough of a dance background mm -hmm. to do something um so that that would have been a little bit different and then there was an episode um eric scott who played ben he and joe conley who played ike actually put together a little song and dance routine for real in real life for real yeah and they went out and they did like state fairs and things like that so they had wow. you know he said you know they hired a music director and a choreographer and you know and, and they got costumes and they somebody wrote a little script for them and they put together about a 45 minute act smart and, uh, yeah so then there was an episode where the producers knew about this and so they wrote it into an episode in about season eight or nine um where the, there's going to be like um, people coming from the USO to scout for talent for to do mm -hmm. various USO shows and and so Ike and Ben are going to you know they're like going to do their little act. So supposedly they put this little act together and Cora Beth is choreographing and whatnot but they already they used a piece of their real act so in that case they didn't have to bring somebody in they just used pieces of what they'd already learned very interesting yeah okay that's cool um here's another one this is rebecca i know you are an athletic person did you have to hold back on your abilities for the episode the wager um well they limited the things that we did um in the wager because although we had stunt people who like there was i don't know whatever five or six teams so mm -hmm. besides the two teams like me and aaron who were a team and then the two, the two guys that we had a, um, a wager with, uh, mm -hmm. those two actors, everybody else was stunt people. 
Okay. Um, but everybody did their own writing in that episode. And I really hats off to Mary, who is not a horse person. Yeah. She's athletic, yeah. but she's not a horse person. And she was just like right in there. She never complained. She never, you know, there were things that, you know, she had to do that I was like, well, good for her. I was really impressed. Oh yeah. Um, big time. So the only, th the only thing I remember having to um, literally hold back was there was a, there was a scene where me and the, and the, my rival guy are racing each other. And there was like a camera truck who was sort of just slightly ahead of us and tracking us riding sort of side by side. Yeah. So we had to stay we had to stay in proximity to that camera truck yeah and Easy. the and so i think it was tracking with the guy who was supposed to be in the lead well i could have easily passed him the horse i was riding could have passed him so i was the trickiest thing there was that we're supposed to be trying to run flat out as right, fast as right, we can right. and i'm like i've got like a serious hold on this horse to keep the horse within because to keep us in frame they wanted us just like the head to head like kind of one head length behind yeah. so i had to keep regulating my horse's speed to his horse to stay in camera frame so that was probably the trickiest thing and because i was oh behind you know so i could do that with my horse um and he could just kind of try and you know work with the camera truck um so that was, you know, that was kind of the only thing with it. Otherwise, the stuff we were doing was pretty straight ahead. Wow. I got to say, that's pretty impressive what you just said about <laughs> just trying to say neck and neck and they're filming you. I mean, that's not, that's like a, like I said, like a, that's stunt work. I mean, that's. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'd been, you know, riding and jumping horses for, you know, several years already. So that was kind of, you know, kind of something that was in my wheelhouse as, as something to do. And that's, I think why they did that episode was because of me. So Mary got dragged into it. <laughs> that is funny. That is funny. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, you know, actually, I can't even remember who somebody had sent this in. I forgot about it. They had asked if, um, cause they had watched the first interview and they had asked if you're still doing any of the, I, I guess it was like skydiving or remember you, you had done the trapeze. If you, you're still doing any kind of I guess, interesting athletic uh, uh, things. No, the only thing I'm still doing is the horses, the the riding and jumping. Yeah. Oh, well, that's huge. So yeah, that's yeah. that's where I was this morning. Had to come home and clean up in time for this. Wow, wow. <laughs> I, was, okay. I was very sweaty a couple hours ago. So. <laughs> got it, got it. Well, especially if you're doing jumping too. Wow. Yeah, okay. and it's very hot <laughs> today. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, I happen to be on the West Coast too, and it is it yeah, is. Hot. Yeah, it is. Um, okay, here's another one. This is uh, Tovak. Uh, in the competition, you and Aaron fall in love with the forestry guy. Yeah. Was that based on a real story? Probably not. I mean, not to say that a couple of Earl sisters might not have had some sort of both liked the same guy. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The my understanding is the majority of the episodes were not based on things that actually happened in Earl's life. I mean, there might've been pieces of them. Um, I don't think Earl laid out most of the episodes. I think episode concepts were pitched to the producers or some of they, they'd like, you know, bring. So I, I think that's more of what happened. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't think there were very many episodes that like, I don't think Earl went and covered the crash of the Hindenburg in real life. Right, right. Um, or, I mean, and even some of the direction that some of the siblings went, I don't think his brother that is the inspiration for the character of Jason was particularly musical. Not, I mean, all of that mm -hmm. was because of John Walmsley being this amazing musician. So wow. they just wrote that, wrote into that as, mm -hmm. as something for his character. Um, and although his sister Marion, who Mary Ellen was was um, fashioned after, I guess she did become a nurse, um, but then went on into other areas. Uh, but so I think it was it was a mix even on the siblings in terms of what mm -hmm. they actually did um, and what their interests were in real life. So some characters I, I understood Earl said one time that the Baldwin sisters were um, 
fashioned after a mother and daughter that he was aware of from his youth. Um, wow. So there might have been some characters that were, you know, maybe some of the recurring characters, maybe there was something mm -hmm. in those that came from experiences. I'm sure there was bits and pieces of things he remembered, but not necessarily full storylines. You know, of course, when you're trying to craft a full storyline, you need to be able to play with that story oh, to make certainly, it certainly. a concise beginning, yeah. middle and end wrap up of a story that is satisfying to the audience. So you have to take a lot of a lot of license on that. I always wondered about the the uh, the moments where uh, they brought in Pearl Harbor, you know, mm -hmm. uh, if that was, you know, I mean, it feels very real, you know, to the time, but I always wonder if that that. Yeah, she did not lose her husband at Pearl Harbor in real life. Um, OK. I don't know. Earl served in the in um, I don't remember which branch of the military. Uh, mm -hmm. And I don't know if other brothers of his served could have been. Um, mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I don't know what if I don't know that their family had a particular connection to Pearl Harbor, you know, personally. Right. Okay, well, yeah, I, I definitely remember those moments. I like them. Um, okay, so here we go. Uh, this is funny, just because you mentioned Beulah Bondi. They, this is from Beulah. Um, at the end of season six, did you have a sense that Will was in bad health? No, not at all. I mean, there were times when, um, you know, he might seem more tired one day than another day, um, but he was, he never complained. He was always very busy. Like uh, every time I went, if I traveled to do press of any kind, you know, out to around the US, mm -hmm. it seemed like anytime I talked to somebody, Will had been there. It's like, oh yeah, we talked to Will. We love every, you know, wow. he, people remembered him. They loved interviewing him. Um, I think typically in our hiatus period, he was out doing things. He just stayed really active and, and busy he was just always really engaged in in life and he, he liked people he liked meeting people he liked going out and doing things so um if he knew that he had any health issues it wasn't you know maybe there there might have been other adults that knew maybe ellen knew maybe you know maybe the producers knew i don't know but it's certainly not something that filtered down to me i don't remember anyone else in of the cast that i've spoken to that has said that they knew anything about him being in poor health so it was just a, a quite a shock then obviously yeah when it happened wow. yeah okay all right um you mentioned ellen which by the way there's another one here uh here this is uh tamitha was it more difficult as an actor to work with ellen after her stroke yes um, only in that, not her as an actor, mm -hmm. you know, she was so brilliant after, um, you know, without speech, it was such a lesson to me about what you can do with no words, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> because <Yeah>. she conveyed <laughs> volumes with no words or just one word or the way, you know, the, one of the things, there were so few things that were easy for her to say, but oh boy was one of them. So that oh boy could be nuanced in so many ways, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, it could be like it was good or it could be like, oh boy, you know, like this bad news or, you know, I mean, so I, I loved that. Um, what was tough was, I think, that it was hard for her, you know, I mean, I think she got tired yeah, um, sure. and she got very frustrated because she couldn't communicate and mm -hmm. she had to focus a lot to be able to say the words that she did say. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes she'd have to have somebody say it to her and she'd watch their mouth like she'd try to mimic how their mouth was moving. Wow. wow. So it, she really, really had to work hard to get words out. Um, and she, you know, she'd get frustrated and then she'd get angry and she'd like smack someone with her cane or she'd, you know, so it was kind of like, it wasn't always a lot of fun to be around, right, but right. we recognized that how difficult it was for her and 
um, you know, everybody wanted to help her how we could, but she didn't always want help. And then she did want help. So trying to figure it out how best to support her um, and what she needed without overstepping and you know making her feel worse because of you know right of course. trying to balance all of that was was much more difficult gotcha you know it, uh, when michael was on uh, she said that she really complimented ellen she said that she thought that as an actor she almost thought that her acting was that not that it was bad ever but that it, that when she did have the stroke watching what she did she said it was almost like watching uh her at her best acting yeah you know it, like she was a better actor it's pretty i crazy. mean it was a master class man you know and, right. and yet i when i look back at episodes um you know, even the earlier, I, I just, I saw the nuances of everything that she brought to scenes, you know, and the choices that she made, um, which were not, were not on the page, you know, wow. and the same thing with, I mean, with, with Michael and Ralph and, you know, and, and, and Will just, you know, I mean, all of them, they kind of, they knew where they were going and they just brought so much more to the characters and the characters grew and became what they were because of what they had brought to those characters. And so then mm -hmm. the writers began to write based on how those actors were creating those characters as opposed to continuing to try and push the, the actors into their idea of how they wanted those characters. And I think that was really smart. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, there was there was some episode, um, and there was a scene between Ellen and Michael, and just very brief, but um, something had happened, and and the two of them were like just outside the front porch, just standing in the front yard, and somebody came and left, and you know they just had this little exchange that was simple in words, but. It, you know, I mean, I just felt like they were all so real. Wow. I never, ever felt like somebody was giving a line reading. And there was just always so much more than, you know, when I taught acting for a while and actors would mm -hmm. say, um, you know, oh, well, how should I say this line? And I was always trying to explain that that was kind of the wrong question. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not if you know why you're saying it then the how takes care of itself. So mm -hmm. it's really, and that's what they were such masters at was the subtext of a scene and knowing how their character felt in any given moment about what was going on and making choices about that because they weren't always the same. You know, right. sometimes you'd expect, you know, that, oh, this is a case where grandma's going to do blah, blah. And then that's not what Ellen chose to do. And mm -hmm. that wasn't, always in the script it wasn't like oh well in this case grandma smiles and says blah blah you know it's like no right. that was that was all ellen you know wow. and same thing with michael yeah i mean sometimes yeah story was like okay well she's going and sometimes the director may have weighed in on things there was a little thing at the end um, i was just watching the great motorcycle race and there's a point mm -hmm. where michael has a scene with with david you know jim bob and mama mm -hmm. and you know he's like telling her i'm going to ride in this race and she doesn't want him to and you know and but he kind of explains his position and and she kind of doesn't like it but she's going to go and then he says well you know are you going to are you going to come watch and she you know she gets up she doesn't answer and then she goes to the door to leave his room and she turns back and there's just the, the hint of a tiny smile so she didn't answer but just in that little tiny smile she said went, it all oh, everything's okay yeah, you know, she's that that relationship is okay. You know, did the director say do that, or did Michael do that, or did Michael did they discuss that in the thing? I doubt that was mm -hmm. in the script. Yeah, could have been, but then you know, sometimes you, actors don't always play those the way they're written in the script. Right, that's cool. That's really cool. Um, here's another one. This is uh, Liz. In the quilting, uh, Mary Ellen refuses to make a quilt. Were there different quilts brought in for this shoot? 
Um, I don't know, because I think we were only using one quilt um, and they're, they're making the quilt. So there would have been, I think there was like a quilt in somebody else's hope chest. So mm -hmm. there might have been ones that were there for some other reason. Um, but the one that we were working on at the end when we did the quilting, as far as I know, that was just one quilt and they were very, I mean, I'm sure we were making a mash of whatever we were doing because oh, I don't know that anybody in that group that was sitting around doing the quilting really knew what they were doing. They were stabbing <laughs> needles in and out. So yeah. somebody's poor quilt, if they were, you know, it's like somebody put <laughs> part of it together and, you know, and then let us. <laughs> right, go at it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, obviously this is somebody that probably isn't a quilting themselves and yeah. yeah. Curious. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's see. We're, 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 we just got two more, which I appreciate okay. to stick around. Okay. This is Margaret. In John Boy's last episode, Mary Ellen announces she is pregnant. Did everyone in the cast know ahead of time or was it a secret? The emotions feel so real in this episode. That we all knew. I mean, that was in the script. We all got, you know, we, we were all, all given scripts and, there was never anything in a script um, unless, you know, pages were changed and on the day something comes down and we're like, okay, you know, what are we doing now? What's the change? But we always knew exactly what was going to be happening. So that was just good acting. <laughs> wow. That's great. That's great. And then Judy, Judy says the grandchild episode was terrific. How did you prepare, prepare for being in labor as an actor? Um, For that one, um, I don't. I don't even remember. You know, I may have. You know, I may have read some books. I may have tried to. I mean, we couldn't. There was no internet back then. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. Um, so I may very well have talked with, um, you know, a, a nurse or a doctor. Um, just to get some, you know, get some input. Um, I know there was, there was a point a year or two later when I did another TV movie um, where I was also supposed to give birth. In that case, it was supposed to be sort of a natural childbirth and like a Lamaze kind of thing. And I remember yeah. studying up on that before I went to film that. Um, but in this case, yeah, I, I honestly don't remember what I did to, you know, a lot of imagination. <laughs> yeah, well, you pulled it off, obviously. I mean, that's a pretty, that's a pretty famous moment in the, in the show. So that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, uh, you answered everything from what I can see here. Yeah, pretty, Yay. pretty exceptionally. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was great. Um, yeah, I went through, I've just taken a double, double, you know, one more look and I'm like, uh, I don't know. I mean, the others are like, I mean, the only other question, I kind of feel like the answer was, what were your favorite episodes? Um, yeah, I mean, it, that changes around, you know, because I've been watching episodes, I've been getting, seeing things that I'd forgotten about. Um, mm -hmm. And so I'd say probably my top three at the moment are the Easter story when mm -hmm. mom had polio and I just thought it was such a beautiful, it, everybody had something to do. There was a, you know, lovely storyline. So love that one. Um, the firestorm's always been a standout for me when, with the, the, the book burning. And mm -hmm. there was just so many, that whole final scene around the campfire with John Ritter and Richard Thomas and Nora, um, Nora Marlowe as Mrs. Brimmer, you know, reading the, the German Bible. And, you know, I mean, just that, you know, really powerful episode. Oh, very still. Um, yeah. And then I and then then about a year ago I watched again The Best Christmas, which I just thought was also really sweet. You know, mama trying to bring everybody together for Christmas and people are scattered all over the place. Mm -hmm. And and just again, everybody had something to do, but it was that real sense of the community pulling together and it wasn't the Christmas that anybody was planning for, but it was the Christmas, it was what needed to happen and everybody, just that representation again, that was so much a part of the Waltons of the sense of community and people supporting each other and people being there to help each other. And that was really, 
kind of what what the hallmark of that particular episode was. So, yeah, I mean, there's just every time I see another one, I'm like, oh, I forgot about this one. This is a really right, good of episode. Course, you know? Of course, yeah, but those stand out. I mean, those are all that I, I agree. Yeah. They still play today. That's yeah, the I mean, the it, burnout, yeah. burning down the house is, is one that stands out for me because it was so intense to shoot working with real fire and all of that and, you know, watching flames flying out of the house and watching you know, wow. our fa- you know, our father and our brother and, you know, people missing and standing on the front yard and going, oh, my God, they're, you know. <laughs> yeah, there. yeah. And that heat, literally the heat, I'm sure you could feel it. Yeah. 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 And working with real flames, you know, is not nothing. <laughs> no, that's pretty scary. Yeah. yeah. Well, listen, Judy, thanks so much, so much for being back on and uh, being so thorough and, and open to answering the questions. I know the fans are going to love this. Oh. And uh I loved it. It was awesome breaking it down. So, um, yeah, without a doubt, I look forward to having you back on, possibly in a, you know, couple months or so. Let's let's see what we can do. That'd be okay. that'd be terrific. But um, yeah, have have an awesome, uh, you know, rest of your weekend. And thank just you. thank you, thank you a bunch, Judy. Great You're to see. You're welcome. You. It's been fun. Okay. All right. Let's Thanks see for you. having me. Bye-bye. You know it. Bye bye. <laughs> Hey, don't forget to hit the subscribe button in the corner of the video. And if you like the video, please hit the like button as well. And while you're here, take a look at some of the other great interviews from anybody from Jerry Mathers to Butch Patrick to Judy Norton. All fantastic. Have a great one.